anthropomorphic animals are everywhere. TV shows, books, movies, and even educational toys. Normally, we don't acknowledge them until it's right in front of our faces. But what if I were to tell you that there is a fandom out there solely dedicated to these animals with human-like characteristics? I will fully admit, at first I was a little unsure about the community. Mostly, I fell into the mindset of it's just adults doing adult things, but with animal costumes. After being in the community for five years at this point, I've learned that it is so much more. It's really a family, and they support each other, no matter who you may be. The fandom helped me a lot, um, being more comfortable with who I am because they're just very accepting in the people that come in. They're always there for them. Um, back when I was younger, I hated that I was bigger. It made me uncomfortable. Uh, I never wanted to show myself. When it hit summer and it was like 100 degree weather, I was still like wearing a hoodie because I didn't want to show my body off at all. Um, I also didn't like the fact that I was gay. It's made me feel like I was weird and outlier, which most um, LGBT kids feel when they're young. Um, but being in the fandom, there were so many people that were just welcoming and inviting, and you know, some people mentored me, let, helped me feel a lot better with who I am. They were there to bring me over to do like my first stuff, like, oh, here's your first time like painting your nails, or here's your first time getting your hair done. Um, here's your first time like meeting others, like going to a gay event or something like that, going to a furry convention. And it, it made me feel a lot more comfortable to be in my skin and eventually that let me build the confidence to come out to my parents, um, to have the fursuit that I have now, not really care what other people think and I'm just more comfortable and more confident of who I am. As an individual, the fandom has changed me in quite a few ways. One, I discovered my gender identity of being non-binary. Um, I also have learned a lot about mental health. The fandom is very supportive of mental health and finds it very important for folks to, you know, like at least with my friends, we take good care of each other and check in and uh, yeah, honestly, it's been very, very helpful for, like, emotional growth. Not only is the furry fandom caring to those a part of the LGBTQ+, they're also extremely supportive to those who create art, stories, and digital content, having their entire audience based around this artistic expression. I really don't think there is a dictionary definition of a furry. It's really how you create it. Something that for me is I identified as a furry even before I had a fursuit. So you don't need a suit to be classified as a furry, but you just need to be someone that is interested and comfortable with having a character, having a personality that is almost part animal. First suiting is just like cosplaying. You always want to cosplay as your favorite character, or the character you want to be, um, who you think is real cool. But as a first suit, it's more of a reflection of yourself. It's you make your character, and it's for me at least, it was someone I wanted to be, someone who was more confident, who was more comfortable with himself, who was knows how to be goofy, not really that shy. And when I got my first suit, I was first suiting around, and I felt a little bit more comfortable being myself until I was just able to do that without the fursuit, but with whomever it is, it's kind of a reflection on what they want to be, what they want to go as, and how they want to proceed in whichever event that they're going to. I would say that what makes the furry community different from other communities such as comic book or anime communities uh, in my personal experience is that when I go to a comic convention, most of the folks are there to see the cosplays, meet celebrities, be there for the panels, where for 
furry conventions, a lot of the times folks are going to see their friends and uh, their own chosen family. Um, and it's also a very large safe space for those who are LGBTQIA+. <laughs> The community has changed me in, in a way where I feel more like I can go out and talk to people more because I feel more comfortable. Uh, I've made lots of friends, so I, I always feel like I have people there for me, which the community is great for because people are, always want to make friends. Honestly, when I think back on it, what made me want to join the fandom was the animations that I saw on the Flipnote app. Um, I saw also a lot of, which everyone always has their own kind of phase, uh, I guess technically mine was a Sonic phase. Um, I saw a lot of people making like their own like Sonic OCs and stuff like that. So I'm like, I would like to make a character that's a fox that resembles me, so I went off from there. Um, I know some people get into furries or get into like the fandom through places like Warrior Cats. Some people get in from uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a lot of different kinds of things that people get into it from it. I was 18 when I first learned about the fandom. My brother came home from a anime convention in town and he wanted to tell me all about it so we sat down and we talked and he introduced the furry fandom to me. The furry fandom, I think, just in a physical sense, people feel protected within the furry head and the furry shell. So I always joke that it's a way for people to come out of their shell while they're still being protected within this furry shell. And it also gives people the opportunity to explore characters and personalities that they wouldn't be able to on their own. After spending time looking at uh, the fursuit, I created Adola because I felt I needed a place to go being what I do for a living and who I am as my own person, I felt like I needed to kind of escape, which is how I created Adola's backstory of she was part of the pact, she did a lot of what was expected of her, and then when she left, she created her own personality, her own individuality, which is something I really identified with. So, my Sona helped me change a bit about myself because I was able to express myself more freely with it instead of being, you know, constantly being held down by parents or friends or other people who know me in real life. The entire design of the Sona was for me to just be free, be creative. It's not insane creative, it's laid back creative and it's just relaxing it's able to get me under control and it helps me with relieve stress the design of connor uh came back in 20, 2017 i want to say a friend helped me with the design actually because i found out he was also a furry and we actually happen to be working at the same place as well it's perfect timing with that in general so he helped me with the design and the the concept of having a species of a shark actually I feel like fits me as well because everyone looks at sharks and thinks ah dangerous animal it's gonna attack me not really if you actually swim with sharks and get to know them some they're pretty cuddly they're nice they don't always see people as a threat or a meal kind of same with how the, the way I look in public Sometimes I'll have just an angry demeanor or I don't look like I'm happy all the time, but that's that's just how I look. That's not how I am. So I, I figured a shark would just be the perfect sona for me, a perfect representation of myself, but allow myself to be more free. And it's been therapeutic, I feel like, for me. It's been amazing. I'm glad to have my sona. I'm glad to be my sona. So the thing that inspired me to be part of the furry fandom was, uh, it was not really any one thing, I just sort of like kept moving towards it. Uh, I was in, I think middle school at the time, and uh, I was actually going to school with my cousin at the time, and we both sort of had a thing for anime. And uh, we always drew comics to each other. 
and one of her favorites was, I think it was a show called Inuyasha, and that was just one of the characters had dog ears, and I thought that was kind of cool, the idea of you know, combining animals with humans, it was just unique. And so I ended up drawing my own character that just had, you know, basic, uh, what's it, I think it was just cat ears and a cat tail, just to make things simple. And I kept, like, as I like looked online for references of things to draw, I kept like finding more and more stuff that kept leading into a it's like, oh here's a person that's covered in fur and has a full tail and you know a wolf face and I was like oh this is cool too and then one thing led to another and suddenly I found you know here's a wiki page about what furries are and I was like oh that's a whole genre of art that I'm interested in and then I found out there's a whole fandom based on it and ever since then I've just been part of the furry fandom for the most part. If you are interested in meeting other furries, there are organized gatherings called conventions. At these events, furries are able to show off their fursonas, meet new people, and enjoy a family-friendly environment. One of the biggest things I hear from my friends is, oh, I need a fursuit in order to attend a furry convention. Yes, a lot of people there have some sort of fursuit. You don't need one to be a furry. You don't even need a character to be a furry. It's an artistic expression. But at all of the conventions I have ever attended, all of them have been super supportive to me for when I didn't have my own suit. Even as going as far as letting me try on their head after getting to know them for a while. Conventions for furries can be anything from small meetups uh, at parks to big, huge, planned conventions at hotel rooms. There's a lot to do at the conventions. You can meet other people in the fandom, other OCs. You can get your name out there and just build bonds and friendships. There are so many different activities that you can do Please at a convention. Fast, so you you can sit busy. and ask questions to a panel of people that make suits, people that are big in the community, you can be a part of parades and dance parties, um, there's lots of opportunities to eat food and to talk with people, it's just overall a really fun experience to meet people within the community. Imagine a child's birthday party, but a ton more activities. There are Dances, games, all, all these, these aren't first shoes, by the way. Games, you can play video games, you can get karaoke going. There's a whole fursuit parade of everyone who was in fursuit just walking around the convention floor, showing off, waving, smiling, having a good time, making other people smile, having others just see them in general. It's safe, it's a safe space for everyone. You can go down there and learn about Let's say how to build your own fursuit, how to design your next character, how to record a video for YouTube. You can even do that. There are panels that can teach you so many things about the fandom and even activities outside the fandom. For example, if you want to learn more about how to play a certain tabletop RPG like Dungeons and Dragons, there's a panel for that. A couple cons will even have a room specific just for that theme. For example, there's one con I went to that had actually an escape room. It was amazing. It's not scary whatsoever. It's a puzzle game. It's family friendly. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with friends. You can do it with random people. Even if you don't want to attend any panels at the con, there are still some activities that are around the con. There can be mini golf, bowling, a mall, arcade, laser tag, anything around the town as well. Best bet, go with friends, go with family, go with people you know and trust. Invite them with you. If you don't have anybody, you can even go by yourself if you want to. The furry community comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors. But with that comes some half-truths and misunderstandings between those in the fandom and those looking to judge them only by their appearance. When it comes to the actual fan, of course there's adult sides to it. But that doesn't mean that's only what it's about. When it comes to the fandom, people are able to set up their own walls and boundaries, and everyone respects that. They try to 
stay on the path where you're most comfortable with as long as you try to stay with what they're comfortable with. It's kind of a give and take. I definitely feel like the fandom has changed my entire life. You know, I used to just not know what I wanted and not know where to be or where to go. And the fandom has given me a place where I can make friends easily and I can, you know, have a job in a place that I love and, you know, I have family and, you know, it doesn't really have to be like my family, but by blood, but, you know, they mean a lot to me and it's always given me a safe space. Yeah, so what really makes the, the furry fandom a safe place is that all of the individuals in it really make a conscious effort to make it a safe place for everyone. Because that is something that takes effort to actively include people, to actively help protect them from, from the bad sides of the fandom, because there can be bad sides as there is with anything. We, we really want, every person in the fandom really wants it to be a space for everybody where everyone feels safe. So we make an active effort to include and protect people who are even the like who are especially the most vulnerable people who really need to be reached out to so for example minors who especially need to be protected from the NSFW side um, we really make an effort to create spaces that are just for them so they don't have to overlap with the more adult sides of the fandom well like in any space there's room for adults and that's it doesn't matter what part of any community you go in. There's, there's sections for adults. And I think that the misconception of it being only for adults is completely untrue because it's just, it's, it's an all ages experience. And it's not something that is restricted only to adults. It, there is adult themes sometimes for adults and there are safer work things not for adults so there's a there's just adults in every fandom that's the best way to put it I think there are so many misconceptions about the fandom because nobody fully understands why people dress up in in their eyes mascot outfits and I think a lot of uh, news stations and articles have been put out to kind of throw shade on the community when they don't really understand it. Yes, people have a lot of misconceptions about furries and what I always say is that with any person, with any group of people, with any fandom, sexuality is merely one facet of a person's personality and I think anyone would be offended if you reduced their entire personality down to that one facet. So that's what I say to people, that it's just one facet of people's personality and everybody's different and everyone uh, has different, you know, sexuality, asexual, bisexual, gay, straight. They're all in the fandom and I don't think that's what we need to focus on. I have had times where I felt like I didn't belong in the fandom itself, but there was always somebody, one, two, or ten people right there to help me through my struggle. It is amazing at how kind everyone is. A simple pat on the head does wonders. A hug, even a hello, how are you, makes my day. My experience is over the past year, I've grown a little bit more now that I have a suit of my own. I feel like I can identify with the character and just create my own personality. The community to me is, uh, well, it's a gate. It's a gate to something that's much more than you would expect. When you see furries, you think it's Here, just what? all these people that are in colorful animal outfits and, you know, maybe you'll make friends. But I've made such lifelong friends that I've known for many, many years now. And 
comparing to like people I met, let's say in high school or in grade school, I don't really talk to many of them, but these people that I haven't met before or have only met like a couple of times during a convention, I feel like I've known them for forever and they've been there for me no matter what, whether it be they're helping me with emotional support, financial support, um, helping me with my homework even. Um, they're just, it was a gate to something more and it's just like one big welcoming family and it's, it's weird to think that there was life before that because this is just, it's been my life now and I can't even think of not having these people in my life. Uh, I feel like the community has uh, really affected the way I both present myself and see myself. Uh, for the longest time, I had always considered myself an introvert for the most part, you know, because I, I thought that I was shy and didn't you know, want to be, when, be around anyone else. But I just, after joining the first fandom, I realized it was simply because I wasn't around other people with the same interests. As soon as I found this sort of niche, uh, you know, group of people that like the same things I did, I found myself being more outgoing and more talkative, more willing to do interviews, <laughs> you know. And um, since then, I, like, today I consider myself more extroverted than introverted, and I really think that's just due to the fact that I found this. So, I think furries are different from other communities uh, because they are very accepting and they also really understand people who struggle with social anxiety and I think that's part of why they're so accepting because they've experienced those struggles in their own life and they want to make other people feel welcome. If you are hesitant to join the fandom, there is absolutely no pressure for you to do so, but it is absolutely worth going to a local meetup or joining a Facebook group and just saying hi to a couple of people. You might end up making some amazing lifelong friends. I know that I have. Um, and if you decide that you don't want to be in the fandom, then you don't have to stay. That's okay too. But I definitely think it's a really great place. Ha <laughs> ha!